Alright, hi everyone. I'm Kelly, and as the teacher just said, I work at Bill and Malay's group. I'm a research associate, or officially researcher five is my title. Um, I have a background in meteorology and atmospheric science, and I joined Dylan's group as a postdoc in 2010. Um, my position doesn't include any formal teaching, but I have guest lectures in the classes listed here. So um, if anyone is ever looking for guest lecturers, that's something I enjoy, so I'll advertise my, <laughs> myself for that. So um, my primary research focus is using a combination of measurements and global modeling to understand processes affecting emissions and transport of key trace gases in the atmosphere. I use a lot of space-based data as well as in-situ measurements. And I work primarily on large scale, global scale, regional scale, um, doing budget type studies on those scales. Um, I work on uh, organic species, primarily methanol, um, which is the most abundant non-methane volatile organic species in the atmosphere. Um, and we'll be starting a new project looking at isoprene, which has the largest emissions of any non-methane volatile organic species. Um, both of these come primarily from terrestrial plants and they're precursors to atmospheric species such as formaldehyde and ozone, so they're of interest in terms of air quality. I've also been finishing up a study looking at the nitrous oxide budget, which many of you are probably familiar with. It's the third most important greenhouse gas after CO2 and methane and is the primary ozone depleting substance being emitted currently, primarily is emitted um, via nitrification and denitrification reactions in soils, which most of you probably know more about than I do. Um, and the tools that I use to do my work are inverse modeling and data assimilation. Um, and when I learned about inverse modeling, I learned about um, the example of the knight who is searching for the dragon he's about to slay. And um, he's seeing these footprints on the ground and based on what he knows about dragons and um, you know what he knows about footprints, maybe there's you know it rains or it's smeared in the mud, so there's other factors he has to consider. Um, he's going to try to deduce from these footprints which of these dragons he's going out to slay. So similarly, as, uh, in our work, we use observations and our a priori understanding about the atmosphere and about emission processes to deduce something about those processes that are driving the atmospheric abundance of trace gases. So prior to using observations in an inverse modeling study, we really need to evaluate um, those observations and I've been involved in evaluating new uh, satellite products retrieving trace gases. This is an example of a methanol product, a new product from the Tropospheric Emission Spectrometer where we use the chemical transport model to kind of indirectly compare uh, satellite retrievals to uh, in situ data, in this case aircraft data. So on the left I have um, aircraft data versus um, model and then uh, satellite data versus model on the right. So for this product we saw consistency over a number of aircraft campaigns and that can give us some confidence that we could use these data to um, learn something about methanol and uh, its uh, emission processes. I've also worked on trying to determine what are the emission constraints or basically the information on emissions that we get from the global nitrous oxide observing network. So that's shown on the left here, a map of surface, surface observations of N2O. And we've used these data in experiments using synthetic observations to see where additional observations might be useful, so like you might expect um, in areas of the tropics and some areas near large sources, such as in East Asia, would benefit from additional observations to better characterize the spatial and temporal pattern of into emissions. And then lastly, I just wanted to mention some work we've been doing with using those surface data to get some information about um, the uh, a better understanding of terrestrial N2O emissions. So I have a couple of timelines here from North America and Europe of the two-year timelines of, of N2O emissions. Our prior model is the black, and then our optimized model is the red. And in both of these uh, regions, we see a shift towards an earlier seasonal peak in emissions based on observations. So our prior model peaks in the summertime, and the observations want to push those emissions to more of an earlier springtime peak. Um, 
in the upper Midwest, we see really right now emissions are strongly underestimated, particularly during their growing season. Um, so looking more into the reason why this may be the case. And I think we'll just stop. So thanks, everyone. So what are conditions? <laughs> well, probably the child will talk about this too, but uh, I mean, already, already. <laughs> <laughs> um, it definitely seems like the uh, direct and indirect ag emissions over the central U.S. are not well characterized by it. IPCC. Basically, we use the inventories that use the IPCC emission scaling factors. That those are not um, properly capturing emissions. In the, in the upper Midwest. So that total emissions, direct and indirect, then? Right, we're looking at total, yep. Yeah. Going back to the staff over there, gather the lambs per month, and that's a big number. How about putting it on a one hectare basis? Do you know how many grams of uh, nitrous oxide is produced in that year? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I can relate to that. But I have a hard time. So is it, they apply 150 pounds. You said per one percent. Yeah, well, 150 right. kilograms per hectare. So is it one percent, five percent? Oh, in terms of an emission yeah. factor? Well, I mean, it's underestimating by at least the fact that two is pretty so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Two percent. Two percent? Yeah, no, I don't know. So talking to you, it's kind of derived the better estimate of that scaling factor. In the total? Like the IPC scaling factor. Uh, I would say like maybe it was one percent now, but yeah, one percent. So it should be higher this year. Yeah, the global is should be good. All right, two minutes level. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>